Hello everyone and welcome to another video. Today I'd like to talk about 3D plotting in Mathematica. I'm going to assume that you have some experience with Mathematica plotting. If you're completely new to plotting in Mathematica, I would recommend starting with our 2D plotting with Mathematica video before continuing on. I'll leave a link to that video in the description below. In addition, if you'd like to download a Mathematica notebook that contains the code that we'll be covering in the tutorial today, also check out the video description as I'll post a link to this sample notebook there. Finally, this is designed to be an introductory foray into 3D plotting and will give you enough to start exploring on your own. Mathematica has tons of ways to generate 3D plots and will release separate videos to cover some of these more exotic options in the future. In terms of an agenda, we're going to first start off talking about how to plot surfaces using the plot3d function. We'll also look at how to decorate the plot as well as how to change the viewpoint. After we look at surfaces, why don't we take a look at how to plot lines using the parametric plot3d function. And after we are able to make some lines, how about let's make some points using the graphics 3D function. So if all of that sounds great to you, why don't we jump on over to Mathematica and dive in. All right, so here we are with our blank Mathematica notebook. Now, before we look at 3D plotting, it might be relevant to review 2D plotting. So if you recall, to generate a 2D plot in Mathematica, you simply use the plot command, and then you specify a function. So in this case, how about let's use cosine of x. And then you specify the domain of that function that you're interested in. So maybe how about x going from minus pi to pi, right? And if you shift enter that, Mathematica will generate this two-dimensional plot with the domain or the x values on the horizontal axis and the range or the y values on the vertical axis. So if you recall, a 3D plot is a simple extension to this idea where instead of having a single input to the function, the function now has two inputs, an x1 and an x2, which are input to the function to generate a scalar output. So therefore, a 3D plot is simply a plot of all of the x1, x2 pairs and the corresponding output of that function at these pair locations. So in Mathematica, many of the normal 2D plotting functions have a 3D equivalent, and that is just the normal 2D name, and then you add the suffix of 3D to the end. So in this case, instead of plot, let's look at plot 3D, and now all I'm going to do is I'm going to modify the function slightly. So now there's an x1, so maybe let's do cosine of x1 times x2 here. And now the domain, we see that there's an x1 set of values. We also need to specify the values of x2 that we're interested in. Um, how about minus 10 to 16? They don't have to be similar. They can be dissimilar. And if you go ahead and input this, you see that we now obtain a three-dimensional plot of that surface. So again, plot 3D is really great at making three-dimensional surface plots here. So again, when you get this thing in Mathematica, if you hover your mouse over the plot, you notice how the cursor changes from a uh, cursor to this kind of uh, double twisty arrow. So what that basically means is if you click and drag, you can twist the viewpoint of this plot here. So great, this is uh, fairly handy, and if you remember, just like how we did in um, 2D plotting, you can easily add options to this plot here. So maybe, you know what, Let, let's copy this code here, and we'll just paste it down here, and let's look at adding some plot options. So if you remember, the way you add plot options, I'm just going to add a comma here, and then I'll put maybe an enter for some white space. I'll put a little comment in here to say adding plot options aka we would like to decorate this plot a little bit. So for example, we can label the axes, right? We can say x1, x2, and then the third axis is f of x1, x2, right? We could also add a, uh, a plot label like we did earlier. We could go ahead and say this is a plot of f of cosine of, whoops, hit the wrong button there, Whoop, whoopsies cosine of x1, x2. Um, we could also go ahead and change uh, the color function. So if we don't like this orange, we could go ahead and change this to something like, uh, I don't know, how about, uh, yeah, rainbow. That seems kind of interesting. So again, you shift enter that, we get this more interesting plot. Some of the more interesting things that you might want to do here with that are specific to surfaces, if you remember all of these... Um, Things that we did earlier were pretty much available in the 2D plotting, but you know we can change things like we can make this surface a little bit uh, transparent. So maybe let's change the uh, plot style, and we'll change the opacity so it's not fully 
uh, opaque here. So if you shift enter this, you see we end up now with this, well, with the rainbow, it doesn't turn out so good when I make it so transparent. But I think you get the idea right now. It's, it's slightly see-through. Um, one other thing that you might want to do here is, is maybe you want to add some uh, grid lines. So you can actually add grid lines here to the faces of this block. I don't like this um, too much. You can see why. Let's just go ahead and do that. So face grids, let's change this to all. And if you shift enter that, you see that you get some grid lines, but I feel like it clutters up the plot a little bit. So usually I don't use it, but I have had that question about how to add grid lines. So I thought I would just show you. So anyway, here we are. This is a good way to generate surfaces. So maybe let's go ahead and start a section up here and we'll call this here um, surfaces using plot 3D. Okay, great. So now that we've looked at surfaces, what else might we want to do? Oh, actually, you know what? Before we leave surfaces, let's do let's do one more thing here. Um, I did mention I wanted to show you how you could change the viewpoint of this plot. So I'll tell you what, let's grab the uh, the simple example here. We'll come down here and paste it. So again, if I shift enter this, right, you get this kind of uh, skewed isometric view of this. You can change the viewpoint that Mathematica chooses to display this at. So you can go ahead and add some plot options. One of the plot options here is the viewpoint. We can say, look at this from the, from the front here. So if you look at this, it will now give you a front on view. But one thing that's interesting to note here is that the viewpoint is actually, it's, it's not uh, a viewpoint at infinity here, right? You can kind of see that you don't get a full on front view of the, the plot, right? Because um, Mathematica chooses a camera point that is somewhere near the surface. So if you don't like that, if you want to see like a full on un um, skewed front view, instead of using uh, options of like front, rear, side here, or top for the viewpoint, you can manually specify this. So in fact, I want to say, I want this to be at X equals zero, y equals how about um whoops minus infinity here and zero and if we do this you can now see the difference here right so now this gives you a viewpoint at uh infinity here so you are really looking at this straight on like you would with maybe say like a matlab plot or something like that okay so great that is um a, a real quick crash course into generating surfaces in mathematica why don't we talk about lines now so there's lots of ways to generate three-dimensional lines in Mathematica here, but the one that I find to be the easiest here is generating lines using parametric plot 3D. So if you remember, the idea with the parametric plot here is that we need to specify functions which tell you how the x, y, and z values of this line change with some parameter, say t. So for example, maybe we would like to say that this function that specifies the x values is just uh, a t here. And maybe the w function that specifies the y values is like 4t minus 2. So we can see here that in the xy plane here that this function just looks like a line with slope 4 and an offset of 2. The last thing we need to do now is specify some function which talks about um, how the z values change. And you know what might be interesting here? What if we wanted the z values to lie on the surface we generated earlier? So in that case, we need to have a function f of z which is something like cosine of t, right? times 4t minus 2, right? So in effect, this is cosine of x1, which was t, times x2, which we said was 4t minus 2. So if we have these three functions, what we could go ahead and do is go ahead and call parametric plot 3D. And what we'll do here is we'll pass it the f of x function, which we said was t, the fy, which was 4t minus 2, and finally the z function, which was cosine of t times 4, whoops, 4t minus 2 here, right? Great. So that's all the functions which specify where this line go. Now what we need to do is say what values does t run through? So let's plot it, maybe t going from minus 2 to 2, something like that. So if you shift enter this, you see that we end up with this line here through space. And again, to make this a little bit easier to understand what's going on, let's go ahead and make some changes to this here. So maybe, you know, I'll add some more plotting options like we've done before. Um, let's go ahead and add like uh, our usual axes label so we can see what's going on here. So again, I think we had uh, x y and uh, z something like that and then maybe let's make this a little bit 
thicker maybe and how about red just so we can see the line a little bit better 0 0.02 okay so now here we got this little bit of thicker line and we can kind of see what's going on perfect so now that we've got a line and a surface you know what might be helpful is tell you what let's go ahead and again assign this now to a variable let's call this maybe how about plot line um, shift enter that now I'll come back to my surface maybe this one we did way up here at the beginning let's call this how about e the plot surface All right and now what I can do is I have a surface and I have a line I've got them set up the way I like it we can go ahead and do things like show plot surface and show plot line and we can look at those two right on top of each other and we can see yep here we are we see the surface and we see the line drawn right on top of it so I think this is pretty helpful I think we're getting uh, getting pretty good at some of these 3d plots so the last thing maybe that I want to show in this quick tutorial here is how to generate points alright so the last thing that we can look at here is points using the graphics 3d function here so to do this first let's go ahead and define some point of interest here so the way we're gonna do this here is let's define this as a matrix mainly as a one by three matrix and uh, again if you're not familiar with using matrices in Mathematica um, there's a link in the description here to our video that discusses how to create and manipulate and use matrices in Mathematica so I'm gonna make a real simple one by three matrix maybe let's call this P here for the point of interest here so I'll make this a one by three and we need to pick some point in 3D space that we'd like to plot. So maybe how about minus 2, 3, that's our x1 and x2 values, or our x and our y values. And maybe for a z value, let's make it so that point sits on the surface. So again, what I need to do here is I need to make sure that this is cosine of x1, which is minus 2 in this case, times x3, x, sorry, cosine of x1 times x2. So something like this. I, I, hopefully everyone gets what I'm saying here, right? So, um... Here's my or my very simple point P here, which is just these three coordinates. So what I can now do here is once I have this, is we can go ahead and I'm put a little comment here. I'm gonna say I want to create a point object. So Mathematica has this function called point. If I pass it this matrix, what it's gonna do is it's gonna create an object called point. So or uh, of type point. So let's call this maybe PT just to distinguish the two here. So now that I have this, this point object called PT, what I can do here is I can draw the point using the graphics 3D function. So if I go graphics 3D and I pass it this point PT and I shift enter that, you see we end up with this point here in three dimensional space, right? And again, we could obviously go back and we can call this thing the plot of the point here and now we could go ahead and try to show all of these things together right we could try to show the plot of the surface whoops so plot surface plot line and the plot of the point right but as you can probably imagine it is really hard to see right that point is this silly tiny dark colored shape and and i can barely see it you can see where i'm trying to circle it with my cursor right now let me see if i drag this to a better angle you might be able to see it a little bit here right so although it does show the point it is ridiculously difficult to see so you know what we want might want to do is let's modify that to be a little bit more visible so let's come back up to my graphics 3d call here now this is a little bit weird or esoteric syntax here but again the guts here is that I want to have this point plotted but what I need to do now is I'm going to enclose this in curly braces or sort of a list and I'm going to start adding some attributes to this. So I want to make this thing a little bit bigger. So I'm going to call this, I'm going to say absolute point size here. And let's say, uh, how about 15? So if I do this here um, and hit enter, you notice it makes the point bigger here. And also, kind of interestingly, you kind of have to do this before you do the point. So in other words, if you go ahead and switch the order of this, it doesn't really work here. So again, like I said, this is a little bit esoteric the way this works. So again, let's put this back the way we wanted to. So you put the parameter first, and then you put the point at the very end of this list here. So again, you shift enter this, you get this nice, bigger, fatter point here. We could also add some more things. Like maybe I don't like this to be black here. How about I like it, I, I'd like it to be green. Again, if I put the attribute in front of the call at the point and shift enter this, I get this nice green dot here. 
So now this looks a little bit better. So when I go ahead and show these, now that point shows up and is a little bit more visible and I can easily see how they interact with the, uh, the surface or the line or whatever else I'm trying to plot in, in three-dimensional space here, right? So um, that's a pretty good, I think, crash course in terms of how to generate surfaces, lines, and points in 3D with Mathematica. Why don't we do a quick recap of what we covered today? All right, so to summarize here, we started off talking about how to generate a three-dimensional surface using the plot 3D function, and we saw that you could decorate this and change the viewpoint and basically manipulate the plot similarly to how you would have done with a two-dimensional plot. In addition to looking at how to make surfaces, we then looked at how to plot uh, a line in 3D space using the parametric plot 3D, which is just one of many functions that Mathematica can use to generate lines in the three dimension. Finally, we looked at how to make a single point using the graphics 3D function in 3D space. So I hope this was helpful and got you started with three dimensional plotting in Mathematica. Again, like we talked about earlier, there are a wealth of other functions that do various different things in three-dimensional space. I'll, we will release a couple of videos on some of those specific functions um, in the future. But if you found this useful, please subscribe to the channel. You can do so using the icon that should have just appeared on your screen because we'll have other topics in Mathematica and engineering as the, um, as the weeks go on. So with that being said, I hope to catch you at a future video. Thanks so much. Bye.